Hello, everyone, and welcome to the webinar today. We are going to take a look at FEM Design Plate, the 2D calculation and design program from FEM Design. My name is Slavi Popescu, and I will be your host and guide today into the webinar. I am joined by my colleague, Mosen Gaimi, from Strusopt, Hungary. And he will be helping us with the questions today. We are using the GoToWebinar platform. In there, you have the questions field. Please type in your questions in the questions field. And we will do our best to answer those questions and get back to you. There are some of you who are already familiar with our software and know us, but there are also some of you who are here for the first time, maybe. So I want to just give a short introduction about who we are and what we do, who is TrueSoft. Well, besides the FEM design software, our 3D finite element program. We do other, we develop and provide structural design software like WinStatic, which is single element calculation and design software like beam, column, or frame objects. BIM Energy is for energy calculation in buildings. Impact precast and impact reinforcement are for prefabricated element production. And pre-stress for pre-stressed concrete elements like beams and hollow cores. Strusoft's history spans on a timeline of almost 30 years. From 1982, when it was part of Skanska construction, and up to 2021, when we released the latest version of FEM Design, FEM Design 20, and the acquisition of BuildSoft in the Netherlands. We have users all around the world, a large part of them in Europe, as you can see from the map, and we have offices around the world. We have the um, headquarters in Sweden, Malmo, and we have offices in Finland and Denmark and the UK in Europe. Let's talk a little bit, a little bit about Fem Design. Fem Design can do a lot, and it is a very versatile structural design software. You can work with it in uh, many different ways, and it is a modular um, software package. That means that, like today, we are going to look at the 2D module, which is designed for 2D plates and walls. But you can work with other software and import analytical models into FEM design, like uh, Revit models or ArchiCAD files. You can also import AutoCAD drawings and work with them as references for your structure. As I said, it, I'm designing it as a modular software. So you have the design modules for foundation, concrete, steel, timber, and composite. FEM design can do a lot. The crack section analysis is a very powerful tool, and we will actually have a look at that today. The crack section analysis allows you to study the behavior of cracks in your plate and takes into account the reinforcement in the concrete as well. There's also a 3D soil module, which studies the soil as a 3D finite element. And you can actually model the whole soil with the foundations and the superstructure. 
and have a complete model for uh, analysis. Fem design is under continuous development. We have one completely new version every year. And what makes us a, a special software is the way we develop the program. We actually use the user's input to um, develop the software. A good example of this is our yearly KCT meeting where customers and users sit down for a weekend workshop. So it's a several day workshop in Budapest with our developers. And they brainstorm and give feedback about the software and how they use it and actually contribute directly to the development of the software. Okay, let's take a look at our main topic today, which is FemDesign Plate. And a FemDesign 20 main menu. I have, I can see here my 3D modules and my 2D modules. So I will select Plate. I am prompted with a configuration box where I choose the national annex and I can choose just the main euro code for now. So here is my workspace. As you can see, it is in a 2D plane, but I can also rotate this view and have a 3D view of my workspace. The program is divided into tabs, the structural, the loads, finite elements, and analysis, which are the calculation engine. And then we have the concrete design module, steel design, timber, and composite. I can start by defining my geometry. Now, Fem Design Plate allows you to define all sorts of geometries and complex shapes. I can draw my plate like this. I have different tools for drawing, of course. And I can also choose a polygonal shape. But what I actually want to do uh, for this example, for today's presentation, is use an AutoCAD file. Let's see where I have it here. So I just take the drawing and drag it into my workspace. And I select the layers that I want to import. And here I have the drawing. And I can work on this. Of course, I can see I have all sorts of uh, layers and lines that I don't want to use right now. So I can just turn them off from the layer panel here. I just select all of the layers and turn them off. So I'm sure that I make this as clean as possible for me to work with. For this example, I'm going to use this contour. So I can actually take the plate, the plate tool, and choose thick lines, and select the lines, and I have the geometry of my plate. Now this plate, I can also, I can customize, I can set the thickness here, and I can choose the material in the default settings. 
and I can also have some stiffness modifiers. What I can also do is make holes in this plate. I just select the plate and then draw a hole here. Let's try to make it like that for this example. Just wanted to show you that you can also have holes in it. Let's see. I want to have some supports. I can have um, some columns, add columns to my plate. Again, in the default settings here, I can choose the, the connections on the Y and Z direction and the top and bottom. I can choose between fixed and hinged. I can choose the section, steel, or concrete or timber and the material. So for this, I'll just use um, these steel sections, which are here. Sure. And I can start placing them where I want on my plate. Now, as you can see, I I have um, I have I have the possibility to place them anywhere on the on the working space. I can also type in the coordinates here. Um, I can also use this nice tool, which is the shift key. This shift key just snaps onto the line that I am on on the plate, and I can just place it. I can move the mouse wherever I want, but the, the column just snaps onto that uh, line. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna place some more columns here. I don't have the exact coordinates. Of course, I can get them if I want to. So I'll just place them approximately at an equal distance between each other for now. To help me, I can use the axis tool. So I can draw axis. I can choose here some axis like that. Yeah, I don't really need this one actually. Um, let's place some more columns first. Again, mid span here. So I can also have an axis. That's pretty nice. I can also place some walls as well. Let's place some walls around the curves here, around the curve edges. Oh, yeah, that's nice. I have some walls there. And I think I'm gonna place some more columns and I'm gonna use these axes to help me. Let's see. Place one here, one here, maybe one here. I don't know what's gonna happen. Let's see, we're, we're gonna find out if this is enough. And one here. Probably put one more there. Let's see, I actually used, actually used the model before. No, that looks good. That's a model that I 
done before. Um, let's see, what did I choose? It looked pretty good. Right. I had an axis here. Like that. Okay. So I can actually put some more columns here, here, and here. All right. So I have my geometry. Like I said, I um, I use some axis to help me with with placing the columns. Of course, if I have the plan, I can use those as references. But for now, I use the I use the axis. Let's go ahead and place some loads. The self weight of the structure. I'm going to use it as plus structural dead load, and I'm going to have a live load case. And in the live, I'm going to set up a surface load of three kilonewton per square meter and choose pick existing region, and the load is applied. with the hole in mind. Okay, make some load combinations. Include my load cases with the Factors. And I can start running my analysis. First, I want to um, show you a tool which is a very useful tool called Peak Smoothing Region. This Peak Smoothing Region is a very powerful tool because it solves the singularity problem which you have with finite element software. These high peaks here at the connection of the column with the plate, those high peak values are redistributed to these peak smoothing regions and you get lower mom moments, lower forces and thus lower quantities of reinforcement that you need to put in the plate. So these are, are uh, very useful and um, efficient tools to use when you're designed, to, to have an efficient design. In the analysis tab, I perform a calculation with the load combinations that I have and click OK. OK, it's good. I see I have some questions here. There are some questions. That's good. I'm happy you are. Asking questions and my colleague Mawson will help you with them. Let's go back to our model here and our calculation. So I just performed the load combination analysis. So obviously I'm going to have some results in the quick tools window here. I have the load combinations analysis results and I can look at translational displacement. And I can find some maximum values somewhere here. I can see that I have that 2.93 millimeters here. 
this edge here. It's probably a little bit hard to see like that, maybe from the top. I have the um, reactions in my connection here. Everything happens in the plane of the plate. So all the forces will be in the planes in the plate's plane. I get some reactions here and I can customize what components I want to see, all the forces and the resultants. in my supports. And I can also have plate internal forces. I can see the moment. MX, MY, and a combination of MX and MY. And actual forces, if there are any, and shear forces. And I have some stresses also, which I can look at. Some, some axial stresses and shear stresses, sigma and tau. Okay, so this was the analysis module where I defined my structure through it from an AutoCAD file, through the contour from the AutoCAD file. Then I placed some columns, uh, placed some loads, some columns, some walls. I placed some loads, made a load combination, and performed the analysis to get the results. Let's see, I want to take another look at this translational displacement, which is 2.93913 millimeters. Of course, I can adjust those decimals like that, or reduce them or, or increase them. Now I want to go to the RC design tab. This is the design module for concrete. I have here bar reinforcement, if I have any beams, and surface reinforcement for my plate, which I actually want to have a look at right now. I can perform a check on my plate right now. And I don't have any reinforcement yet. So all these utilizations here that I get, they will be um, inconclusive as I don't have any reinforcement yet. But I get some good results from this. I get, I get a required reinforcement in my x and y directions. That gives me a good idea of how much reinforcement I need in my plate. I'm going to look at it with the color palette, which is a nicer way to see this. So I can see here that I have a maximum of 324 millimeter square per meter in x bottom direction and i can also see the top x and y I have a maximum here of 1136 so this gives me an idea of how much reinforcement i need now I have the option to choose an auto design. I go to design in the parameters. Here is where I actually set the parameters and allow the program to give me an automatic layout of an optimum reinforcement. So I'm going to use this information that I got uh, from the required reinforcement. And I'm going to play around with these parameters so I can set up a mesh of a net, a reinforcement net, and additional re reinforcement. The base net will be laid out across the whole surface of my plate. 
And then I have the additional reinforcement for regions where I actually need more than the base net. So I can see right now I have some around 524 and that's maybe a little bit more than I want. So I can reduce the spacing and I can reduce the diameter. I think that's nice. increase the spacing actually and reduce the diameter so this will be my base net laid across the whole plate and additional reinforcement some sort of combination of these diameters i can also of course adjust them and choose what kind of diameters i want to use and the spacing And for my top face, I think I also want a base net. Let's use the same, see what happens. It's a live demonstration. Okay, I set up my parameters and click design. And I got it right. I got a good combination here. I can have a look at how my reinforcement layout looks like. Let's hide these for now. So I can see that I have a base net of eight millimeters at a spacing of 200 across the whole plate. And then I have regions with my diameter eight of 150 in the regions where I need extra reinforcement, which is actually here, here, and a little bit here, and a little bit up here. That's the X, this is the Y direction. And now the bot at the top part, can see around my columns that's a nice distribution of additional reinforcement here here around my column here my hole yeah it's pretty good so i can see here all the checks that are being performed from a utilization point of view I have bottom X, bottom Y, top X, top Y buckling, which in this case is, I only have my plate and it's plain, and the shear capacity. And I have the crack widths, bottom and top, which we'll take a look at in a second. Of course, this is the automatic design. So I get this layout suggested by Fem Design. If necessary, or if, if by choice, I want to enter my reinforcement manually, I also have that option with the manual design tool. The manual design lets me enter the reinforcement in any area that I want manually. So I can, again, I choose here the diameter, the spacing, my cover, and then I just enter uh, um, a reinforcement um, surface or reinforcement area here manually. But I don't need it right now because it was a good it was a good design. Yeah, I just enter it and then I check it uh, again. So I have this nice layout right now given to me by the auto design. I have the detailed results tool here and I can use it to see the calculations performed in any point on my plate. So if I just click here, 
there will be a documentation report with all of the calculations performed. I can see uh, an overview of my geometry here and cross section with the with the stress distribution in my section. I have my reinforcement down. Uh, tension force is there and compression. I can see here the internal forces from my plate, the design forces obtained from the internal forces, and then the combination of these design forces that are used to actually calculate the reinforcement. I also have the interaction curves based on applied reinforcement. And I can add this to my documentation. I can actually go ahead and do that and have a look at how it looks. In document in a report format. Now that I have this reinforcement layout and I have added some reinforcement into my plate. I can go ahead and perform a cracked section analysis, the analysis that I've mentioned in the beginning. So for that, I'm actually going to go back to my loads here and I want to create a new load combination. I'm going to choose LC2 and choose a serviceability quasi-permanent limit state type of combination. And I'm going to choose, um, again, real quick, the combination of my, of my forces, of my load cases. In the analysis tab, I go to calculate load combinations, set up by load combinations. And I can see here, I have my two load combinations listed and I choose the crack section analysis option here. I, I cross it. So I know I'm telling the program that I want a crack section analysis for this serviceability limit state combination. Click OK. And I can see here the loading level, the crack load level. How the program works is that um, it loads the plate with 20% of the load and looks for cracks. It identifies the cracks, reduces the stiffness of the plate in those nodes where the cracks are, and then starts to add more loading. So you get an iterative process, a nonlinear analysis. with the reinforcement taken into account and the cracks taken into account. Let's see. So after I've made my design and enter the Design, the reinforcement, I can perform a crack section analysis and look at the behavior of the plate with the reinforcement in it, the crack, um, with the crack section analysis. I can also see the crack width and maybe I don't have cracks right now with this type of loading that I have. It's probably not enough because there's also, there's also some tension strength in this concrete. So if, if you want to not consider the tension of the, um, of the plate at all, of the concrete, you have to go and create a new material and set that strength to almost zero. You cannot set it to zero, but you can put it 
as 0 0.001, for example, and you will get um, cracks all across the plate. But I think I can just um, increase the load a little bit just to have a look at these. Let's give it a try and ask. I don't want to create a new material. So I'm just going to increase the loading here. Let's put two. Two? Yeah. Double the load. Set up for a crack section analysis. Yes. Okay. Okay. I actually need to, need to perform a check of the plate as well. So let's see how that works. Once I've performed the, the crack section analysis to, to actually look at the cracks. Maybe it was that, that, that was why I didn't get any cracks in the first place. RC design here for my check. Yeah, so I do get some cracks. I can see them represented here. Um, I chose crack with the bottom. And of course, this is from the maxim, the, this combination, serviceability. Um, I can see the crack width here, and I can see the utilization. It's 33% cracks, bottom and top, reached from the total um, crack width, admissible crack width. I can actually set it in the design calculation parameters here. I say allow crack width. Right now it's set to one millimeter. Of course, I can adjust it. Actually, put 0.3 here. 0.3. Let's say perform the check again. And I can see that actually these cracks exceed the 100% utilization for admissible cracks. And I probably have some on top as well. Let's see how it affects my deformation. This one I want to see as a graph. And I want to look at the serviceability. So I can see here that I have a 6.32 millimeter deformation. But I didn't look at the simple calculation. So 6.32. This is the deformation, maximum deformation with crack section analysis it taken into account. So if I choose a simple, non, um, yeah, not considered a crack sections, let's perform that now. So yeah, the cracks have had an effect and I got larger deformations in the in the case of crack section analysis. And I can actually have a look at the plate as well and see that there's a little bit increase in the in my cracks without the crack section analysis. So yeah, I can I can look at different results and see the behavior of my plate. Uh, it, it, I, can, I can do that for a long time. And um, if you're curious, you can, you can do that um, on, your, on your own model. Um, but for this, for this limited time right now, we only have an hour allocated. So I'm not going to, um, to look to shed any more focus on this. I do have some other topics that I want to show. 
I just wanted to just show you that you have the possibility to investigate from a crack section analysis point of view and take the reinforcement into account into the plate. The next thing that I want to show is the punching reinforcement. So in the reinforced concrete design tab, I have the bar reinforcement surface and punching reinforcement. For this, I think I'm just going to hide these results for now. Uh, the reinforcement, I mean. Get a bit. So if I go to, to my check here, I can see that I have all the punching regions already defined. So at the intersection of my columns with the plates, I have some punching regions listed here. And I can actually select all of them and perform a check. And I see the behavior for them without any punching reinforcement. So I can see that it's actually, they hold up pretty well. That's because I don't have too, too big of a loading. So everything is below 100%, except for this region here. So I can actually set, I can actually look at this and perform a punching design on this column here. Of course, I can increase the loads and have more regions where I need it, but I can I can work with this. It's fine for this for this demonstration. Again, this was a check looking at the punching without any punching reinforcement, only the reinforcement in the plate. So I again have the option to use an auto design or a manual design in the auto design tool. Again, I set up my parameters here. And I have a list of available punching reinforcement layouts with their respective parameters. I have here the stud rail type. And I actually have a very specific stud rail product from Peco embedded in FemDesign. I can choose the parameters here that I want to be considered and a pattern, which can be radial, orthogonal, or semi-orthogonal. And set up my parameters like that for this one, and click Design. Yeah, this was an unfortunate placement of my column in that hole. I was thinking that might happen. Fortunately, I have this model here with a with a safer location of my of my um, hole in the plate. So let's let's use this one. Oh, that column was a little bit close to the edge there. I think that was what caused the problem. So let's take a look at the punching design here. I can see that I have already entered some punching reinforcement. Let me just perform a check. Oh, yeah, I have to select this plates. So I see the placement of my of my punching reinforcement at the intersection of my columns, at the top of my columns. I can also see a punching utilization. And again, I can use the detailed result to click on one of these areas where there's punching reinforcement and see the detailed calculation, just like for the, for the bending reinforcement. And I just click Add View to Documentation. 
to add the detailed calculations to my report. Okay. This is actually what I wanted to show you today regarding plate calculation and design in FemDesign. If you're not yet familiar with Strusoft and FemDesign, please visit our webpage, strusoft.com, and apply for a trial. That way you can get a trial license and use it on your own projects. Just fill out the form in the trial license tab and submit and you will be eligible for a trial license. And if you want to look at, at, other, um, at other features of the program, you can you can just contact me at any time and we can have a one-on-one um, -on -one session and of course go through any questions that you might have on on a specific example or you want to have a trial license for you and test it on a, on a on a project i'm i'm here to help you I actually had some polls here, which I forgot to launch. Here is a poll, which I'm launching right now. And I have, I had planned them to be, to have them during my presentation. It's going to run them now. I can see there, there were a lot of questions here. And again, if you have questions afterwards, of course, please feel free to contact me. Okay, and I'm doing, I actually have another poll here, so I'm just gonna launch it now that I have you all here. It also gives you time to type any last questions that you might have before we end. There will also be a survey at the end of this presentation. And please take a few seconds to fill it out. It's a really quick survey. It will help us keep track of our webinars.
Okay, I've closed the polls now. And, oh, I can actually share it with everybody. <laughs> share the polls. The poll results are in. And I thank you once again for attending and for your attention and for your interest in our webinars and products. Keep an eye out on our website again for upcoming webinars. For our upcoming webinars, you can find them. On our main page. Webinars, training, and events at strusoft.com. And you can register for any upcoming webinars in the in the next in the near future. The next one that I will host is a Fem Design 3D Structure Introduction Showcase for new users, which is next week. So now is your chance to sign up for it. And um, enjoy the rest of your week and the rest of the day. Thank you very much for attending. And thank you, Molson, for helping with questions. <laughs>